Where's your mind, little girl? Poppy walked into his den and found me sitting on the floor with my legs crossed and my head in my hands. You've been awfully quiet these last few days. Just thinking, I told him. No one in this house is used to you being quiet, he chuckled. Even when you were a baby and you couldn't talk, you ran your mouth. And after all, and, and all I ever said to Grace and Ruth was hush that baby up. His laughter gave way to a cough that lasted for a while. When he got his breath back, he went on. Now you want to be quiet and think? You have it all backwards, little girl. Poppy meant so very much to me. He sat in his easy chair and unfolded his newspaper. I loved sitting in, in his den, with, in, sitting in the den with Poppy. He read the paper and I read with him. He watched baseball and I learned to love baseball too. Still sitting on the floor, I scooted closer to him until I sat at his foot of his easy chair. Poppy, do you know my father, I asked. I've met him, Poppy said casually, never lifting his eyes from the paper. Then he put the paper down and seemed to think for a moment. I know this about him. He's got two beautiful daughters. He began to cough again. He seemed unable to stop, helpless to control it. When the attack passed, he lifted me onto his knee. I recall noticing that Poppy struggled a bit, that he didn't seem as strong as I always remembered. I've got a riddle, he said. What do you have more of the more you give it away? I thought for a moment, but nothing came to mind. What, Poppy? There was another coughing fit before he answered. Love, he said, as he pointed to his heart. But before you give it to someone, but for you to give love, someone has to give it to you first. That's why it's called the gift of love. Now, what do you think would happen if a little boy didn't have that gift of love? He would never know how to give it to anyone. And I think that's what happened to your father. He was never given the gift, and someone simply cannot give what they do not have. I have to think about this, I told him. He laughed. And once again, coughing overcame him. Finally, he said, good. You give that some thought. Poppy passed away later that spring. He lost his battle with lung cancer. I was eight years old when I lost the only man who had ever loved me. The only man who made me feel I was not only good, I was good enough. It is so important to make good choices. We are not all from, oh, life's not perfect, it's imperfect. I, I embrace now mess, <laughs> you know? I realize how hard my mother tried, but you are so worthy of respect, of kindness, of gentleness. <laughs> Well-meaning men. I'm going to get a t-shirt. I love that phrase. Oh, we love you. We love you. We adore you. We realize that life is difficult being a man. But we will not stand for being treated unkindly. <laughs> And you won't get away with it, as my husband told me. Because we are going to hold you accountable. See, every since the days of Adam and Eve, sin's growing more and more, leaving folks shattered and grieved. See, the devil want to scatter and deceive, and God's no love. He'll leave you battered to bleed. Every day getting sadder, we need the love of Jesus Christ instead of another platter of weed. I pray the Lord has mercy on my soul. Sometimes I find me climbing up the ladder of greed, trying to get my score right. But the Lord said I'll be more blessed if I go ahead and scatter my seed. So I'm trying to do everything he tells me instead of saying that it really don't matter to me. See, the tongue is a boastful thing. It could either bless or be full of...